Hello class, thanks for watching the 7.6 video. In class we talked about exponential functions and today we're going to take an even closer look at growth and decay. So go ahead and take a second, pause the video and do the first a couple of review problems. When you get back we'll talk about compound interest which is a special application of exponential growth. And we'll talk about exp we'll talk about compound interest after we take a look at our equation for exponential growth. So in our equation for exponential growth, we have a is going to be our initial amount. So that's our first amount that we start with. If we're working with money, that's going to be our investment. Y is going to be our final amount. So that's how much we end up with at the end of it after the growth has occurred. T is the time. So that's how long the growth happens. And R is the rate of change. It's really important that we remember to express this as a decimal because they may give it to it. They may give it to us as a percent, but we need to work with that and change it to a decimal point. So let's take a look at our first example. In 2008, the town of Flat Creek had a population of about 280,000 and a growth rate of 8.85% per year. We write an equation to represent the population of Flat Creek since 2008. So really all we're going to be doing here is using our equation for exponential growth, which is right above. So we're worried about the population at the end of the growth. From So they want us to set up an equation. So we're going to have the final population is going to be y. They've already given, they've already given us our initial amount, a. Our initial amount was 280,000 people. What else did they give us? They gave us a rate. So our rate is 0.85%, they said. But let's not forget, we need to express this as a decimal. So how do we express that as a decimal? Put it over 100, and we get 0 0.0085. So then we can substitute those into our equation. Y equals 28,000, 2800,000 times 1 plus... 0 0.005, oops, 85. And they did not tell us how many years we're working with yet, so we're going to leave t as our variable for years. So that's going to be the equation that we use to represent the population. Let's take a look at the next one, and they'll ask what the population is after a certain number of years. So in 2008, the town of Flat Creek had a population of about 280,000 and a growth of <coughs> growth rate of 0.85% per year. According to the equation, what will the, be the population of Flat Creek in 2018? So if you look at the numbers they've given us, we have the same initial amount and the same rate. So we're using the same equation, y equals... 280,000, 1 plus 0 0.0085, so the only thing we're missing is t, so let's figure out what t is over here, we want to look and see what the population is in 2018, so if t, if t is in years, how many years has it been from 2008 to 2018? Well, we can just do 2018 minus 2008, and we'll see that t has been 10 years. So then we can substitute 10 in for t, and we can solve for we can solve our equation. So I'm going to add the one and the point zero zero eight five, one point zero zero eight five to the tenth power. And then we can use our calculator to multiply each of these out. And we will get our final answer of 304,731. 
So our final answer is going to be, according to the equation, the population of Flat Creek will be about three three hundred four thousand seven hundred thirty one in the year of two thousand and eighteen. Okay, so let's move on to number three. Number three is another population question. I want you guys to go ahead and do this one on your own. You're going to use that same formula. And then after you figure out, after you determine what a formula is, I want you to find out what the population would be in the year 2014. Okay, so let's take a look at our next key concept, which is compound interest. Our last equation was exponential growth. This one is more specific in compound interest. So with compound interest, we have one new variable added, which is n. n is the number of times the interest is compounded each year, and t still represents the time in years. So r, p, oh, and p is different as well. p is our principal or our initial amount. So our lowercase a is changed to a capital P. And now our capital A is the current amount of money, so that's going to be how much money we have after the interest is added to our initial amount. So let's see how we can use this in our first example. When Jing Mei was born, her grandparents invested $1,000 in a fixed rate savings account at a rate of 7% compounded annually. The money will go to Jing Mei when she turns 18 to help her with her college expenses. What amount of money will Jing Mei receive from the investment? So let's let's think about this. What have they told us? 1,000. That's going to be our initial amount. So P equals 1,000. They also told us a rate of 7%. Let's not forget, we need to express our rate as a decimal. So our rate of 7% is going to be changed to a decimal, which would be 0 0.07. So what is our N? We're looking for N. N is the number of times the, the investment is compounded each year. So they tell us that it is compounded annually. It's compounded annually means it's going to be compounded one time a year. So our n for this equation is just going to be 1 because it's only compounded once a year. The last variable we're looking for is t. t is how long. So when Jing was born is when we invested and when when she turns 18 is when we get the money back. So t is going to be 18 years. Now we can substitute these into our equation. So the amount that we want is going to be $1,000. 1 plus the rate is 0 0.07 divided by n, which is 1, to n, which is 1, times t, which is 18. We can use our calculator to simplify that. This is going to be 1.07 to the 18th. And so our final answer, once we use our calculator, is going to be 3,379 dollars and 93 cents. So let's do one more. When Lucy was 10 years old, her father invested $2,500 in a fixed rate savings account at a rate of 8% compounded semi-annually. So semi-annually means it was compounded twice a year, at the half of the year and then the full of the year. So when Lucy turns 18, the, the money will help her to buy a car. What amount of money will Lucy receive from the investment? So let's start with our initial investment, P. We're told that he invested $2,500. What's our rate this time? Our rate is 8%, so we know it's going to be 0 0.08. And then we're looking for N. 
how many times a year was it compounded? This time it was compounded twice a year because it said semi-annually. So n is going to be 2. And our last variable is t. How long is it going to be compounded? How many years? Well, we invested when she was 10. We get it back when it turns when she turns 18. So our t is going to be 18 minus oh, minus 10 years is going to be 8. So our t is going to be 8. And then we can substitute those into our equation. So the amount that we're, we will get is going to be 2,500. 1 plus our rate, which is 0, 8 over 2 over n. And from our formula, we know that it's n times t, which is 2 times 8. And we can simplify this one more time before we use the calculator. 1.04 to the 16th power. And then we can use our calculator to multiply all of that out. And we will get 4,600 and $82.45. Cool. So she'll be able to buy a pretty nice used car. So let's take a look over at our last example, our last key concept, which is the equation for exponential decay. We looked at exponential growth. We looked at compound interest. Now we're looking at decay. And guess what? The formula is almost the exact same as growth, except we have a minus sign this time because we're decaying instead of growing. So we're going to use the same exact variables and we're going to express our rate as a decimal still. So let's take a look at our first example. During an economic recession, a charitable organization found that its donations dropped by 1.1% per year. Before the recession, its donations were 390,000. Write an equation to represent the charity's donation since the beginning of the recession. So our initial amount, what's our initial amount? 390,000, so A equals 390,000. What else do we need? We need our rate. Our rate is 1.1%, so we put that over 100 to give us our decimal, 0.011. And we are looking for, that's all that they give us, because they want us to write an equation to represent the charity's donations. So we have Y is going to be the amount that we'll get, our initial amount, times 1 minus the rate, 0 0.011 to t so we can substitute any number of years in for t to find out how much something will decay so i believe that's enough for you guys enough information for you guys and you'll use that formula for the next example and you guys can do the last three problems on your own we can talk about those in class on monday so you guys have a wonderful weekend and i'll see you soon